You're listening to Fucks Given. I'm Florence. And I'm Reed. And welcome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> what like a solemn <laughs> intro to the podcast. It almost feels like we're going to Sunday church. Like, fucking hell. <laughs> uh, people just, just tuning in for the first time are like, what lovely girls. How beautiful. Oh, so <laughs> lovely. So lovely. I heard this podcast was dirty. It doesn't sound dirty <laughs> uh, but actually it's pure they're gonna film. get they're gonna get a rude awakening big old Sometimes surprise soon. yeah this is <laughs> big old surprise. we're gonna talk about favorite subject hey today yes this is your favorite subject ever mm, degradation degrading content uh, probably trigger warning for anyone else out there you know just to just to be cautious Yeah, we're kind of following up from the fuck off episode where we had the winner of the episode who had a marvellous story about the time his sister was in the room next door after he had been properly degrading his girlfriend. (laughs) Um, And yeah, they did not realise that she was next door. (laughs) So good. I'm fairly certain that's happened to me and my sister so many times. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much why i think he won it was because you related so much to it so hard to it and especially like i have a really close relationship with my sister so i can i can tell her the stuff that i'm into she knows what kind of sex games i enjoy but if it's like if you don't have that relationship and you hear your brother saying that shit you're probably just saying oh my god he's a fucking psychopath like what the hell right right so like who is my brother <laughs> no <laughs> some american psycho shit <laughs> literally (laughs) literally but anyway um the reason that why we're bringing it up again is because we really wanted to know more information about like what actually happened and he wrote into us basically saying that he would give us loads more information so we have a voice recording from him giving us more information about that fuck off story i actually can't wait to listen to this this is uh I, first time I'm listening to it, so our reactions. Have you listened to it? Yes, I listened to a different version of it because oh, okay. he sent he sent something on Instagram. Then we got him to re-record it. Okay, um, so yeah, this is going to be like genuine reactions, first time reactions to this story. Yeah, which will come up after a little update because Florence, you've, you're exciting. I mean, you're exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. You're exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, Florence, you have some exciting news. Uh, I mean, I'm in Toronto, in Toronto, Canada. Oh, so I traveled yeah. here on on Monday. I mean, this will make no sense because this podcast comes out like a week after uh, the fact. I understand. I get it. But you know, you know how it works in this biz. <laughs> um yeah, I traveled here on Monday and so yesterday was my first like full day in Toronto and I'm here all by myself. Oh, bye. Oh. Bye. So if anyone's out in Toronto and wants a little like buddy, hit Florence up on Instagram. Like I'm doing Give it again. I'm just pimping you out again. Literally. That's my favorite but- thing. <laughs> it's your favorite thing to do i feel like maybe i'll be nearly gone by the time this episode comes oh, out but i'm yeah. not sure i'm here for two weeks basically um and it's really weird being by, like, here by myself because i was going out like for a little explore yesterday and i was like it kind of just feels like i'm in like a weird daydream because like there's no one to talk to yeah. there's no one to experience it with so um bizarre. and like i I'm quite like, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm the most confident person as Mm. well. So like, I've been like a bit nervous, like doing things by myself. Like when I went into a cafe to ask for my matcha latte, it just felt weird because I was like, I'm in a different country, but they talk English. So like, (laughs) and then like, oh my God. And then like the, um the thing that you pay on the card machine Mm -hmm. like was asking me loads of questions about tipping and I was like fuck people tip over here like how do I do this and then like the card machine just wouldn't work and like and then oh my god so I ended up not tipping which is really bad over here is it I I just have no idea why I have one exciting thing that's happening is I'm going on a date tomorrow from field yeah that is really exciting nice yeah I'm kind of scared but 
uh, excited. Um, like, I'm really ready for meeting people that are going to show me the city. Like, because it's kind of weird just, like, trying to explore it by myself. Everyone's fucking recommendations are where to drink, where to eat. Yeah. And I hate going to restaurants by myself. I feel like, you, I babe. find it so awkward. It's so boring. So I'm just... It's so... Yeah, like, I don't know. I'm just... You know, I'd really like to meet someone that I can explore the city with luckily my friend's gonna be here next week so i can hang out with her and we can go to all the places that people recommended there's something very admirable (laughs) about going out of your comfort zone and out on your own i think people who do traveling by themselves like that really sets them up for life because us not being able to go and do those things on our own basically just shows how codependent we are on people yeah basically and i guess that's like one of the main i really felt like oh my god this is like the ultimate like that ultimate challenge test. yeah the test. the test to to be happy by myself yeah. like after the breakup because that was like one of the things that I was really struggling with um like after being so like codependent with each other and and um yeah so like being like being able to be here and be content and happy I feel like if I am able to do that then I can do anything. Yeah, literally anything. That's why self-dates are so good for you because, you know, you take yourself out for dinner, cinema. Um, It does just prove to yourself that you do not need to rely on other people for happiness. Exactly. I am not there yet. I don't know how the fuck you've done this. Like, I mean, (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm here. (laughs) I'm not sure I'm like doing the thing just yet. Um, I've definitely been like on dating apps like a lot more since being here because I'm like, please friend me i'm like talking to some like a couple of people in la that i'm really excited to meet when i get there um but yeah other than that i'm like okay come on just try try (laughs) Try. be by yourself like just try (laughs) ah hateful hateful stuff we have to do growing up things boo i hate growing up it's not it's not fun (laughs) but it will it will be worth it you know oh it's so worth it this is going to be like the ultimate breakup goodness right Mm -hmm. this is just you can't do anything heal me what about you, Reed? I think you have some exciting updates for us. I do. I do have some exciting updates, but I just don't know how much I should reveal because one, even though uh. I don't believe in jinxing, I don't want to jinx it. Um, actually, yeah. no, it's more like I don't want to say it's going to happen and then it not happens and then you have to go through all the thing of it not happening. Yeah, I totally relate to yeah. that. But that's such like a tease for the curious fuckers. I know. And I also Can you tell us anything else? It's not really an exciting update. I have noticed that my mental health is slipping, but probably because of the stress of this in this new exciting information that I can't that I want to celebrate but I can't really <laughs> celebrate. Um I'm also back on contraception. Um and my vagina still hurts, which isn't great, but we're trying to figure that out, you know, like trying to figure it out. Uh, just waiting for the doctors to put me through some tests and yeah. see what happens there. But yeah, I'll just keep you up to date. I'm trying really hard to stay positive. Of course, I've got my therapy yeah. every Thursday, which is just an absolute miracle and sorts me right out. Are you able to have sex with the pain that you're experiencing? I am able to at the time, but the pain is generally either during or afterwards, often not the day afterwards. And so I have a lot of fear before we have sex, which kind of ruins the mood. So I'm there like, I'm horny, but I'm like, I mean, I'm not even as horny as I was. I was like so horny before I was literally fucking like rabbits. And now I'm scared of that doubled over pain the next day. So I'm oh, kind of in this like babe. weird place where I don't really know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, um, it's almost would... just like the sex isn't worth it, but yeah. you want to do it. Yeah. It's like feeling so horny for something and then just being like, oh, I can't. Yeah, and it's it's so, I mean, it's a massive stress and trial on a new relationship and on Sam yeah. where we've literally gone from fucking all the time to all of a sudden not fucking at all, which is a massive shock for both of us um yeah and of course like my my love language my connection my intimacy my everything is through sex so not having that has sort of like really put a different spin on the relationship but i also think that yeah it's to do with my mental health and it's slipping a little bit i'm definitely getting negative intrusive thoughts back i'm overthinking uh, like so much at the moment i can't escape from it but I, i am recognizing it and i am doing the steps to 
try and sort it out. Like I'm, I'm going to write in my journal, which I hate mm-hmm. doing so yeah. much, but it really does help. And of course, talking helps does help. a lot um, and being yeah. open about everything, even if you don't want to be. It's about, <laughs> you know what, you're, you're aware of it and that's what's really important. Yeah. Um, that's the first step. And also we've got to remember that it's SAD season. Like we are approaching like the winter months, the days are getting shorter and biologically like our bodies like scientifically feel more down sat like sadder during these months of the year so it's like going from like the highs of summer Mm -hmm. to then being like oh the days are shorter it's getting cold again and I know you you, you're not generally like affected by SAD but maybe it is like I'm sure Something. a part of it. Yeah, I'd never thought that I was affected by SAD, but definitely getting that back to school feeling. It's around September mm. that, especially in the UK, the yeah, the winter's coming, autumn's here. It's getting so much cold. It was such a dramatic temperature change for us that I, like most of us got really sick um, and got caught with colds. And and yeah, you have that feeling of like, oh, the fun, nice, exciting summer's gone, and now we've got miserable like fucking rest of the year winter. Um, and there's so much to do and there's so much pressure on us. And then of course, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Also, I just wanted to say to everyone, I'm literally living right next to a, um, construction site. (laughs) So if you hear like any building clanging, beeping noises, it's because the flat, the Airbnb that I'm staying in is literally right next to like the biggest construction site that I think I've ever seen yeah when I <laughs> sorry I can when hear, I hear the builders <laughs> when I woke up yesterday morning I went out to like look out um side and the builders were just like all there staring at me through my window and it was <sighs> really annoying yeah of course they fucking were like naked woman naked woman at work oh my god <laughs> there's a naked woman <laughs> not okay no. oh, they can't but yeah so really it. fucking annoying the noise that's what it is curious fuckers it is what it is whilst i'm here because it's i'm due. living downtown to Tor- toronto and there is construction everywhere yeah i mean everyone likes to look when there's nudity everyone does but we can't to be fair <laughs> if it was someone on the other side i'd be like yeah exactly like oh, there's a naked person um so yeah it's a really tough one it's like we could easily be like they shouldn't look and it's like oh, they're only literally only human like they can't fucking help it <laughs> idiots <laughs> it's like rear window as well for them like they must just get like a really nice insight into everyone's little houses and little lives oh my god yeah especially if it's like still dark and it's light in your in your place yeah. oh yeah so i had like this people pink watching. pink light in the room as well so it must have looked really like mm. interesting Although it was really annoying, so I turned it off last night and then it turned back on and it's not pink anymore and I can't change it back. Oh, no. (laughs) I'm so sad. (laughs) Surely. There'll be a way. There might be a remote somewhere. It's all right. We'll figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) Need the ambiance. Ambiance. Um, Shall we get into the episode? I think we should get into the episode, yeah. I think I'm going to have to save my bigger news for at some point in the future. Yeah, I think think that's a smart move. Save it for like when it's more concrete. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. So we're going to get some more info on the winner of the fuck off episode. Yes! <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, oh, I can't wait to listen. Are we ready? Yes, I was ready. Okay, let's go. Hey, Florence and Reed over at Come Curious and everyone else who's part of this team. Uh, I'm Joe. I am the apparent belt holder I'm going to go with of the... <laughs> Uh, of the fuck off challenge that you guys have created we'll see about that. Um, I didn't think I was going to win <laughs> the, the competition but apparently I've got one of the most fuck off stories so to give everyone uh, like more background information what happened so my, my partner and myself were over my house um, and we both believed that we had the entire house to ourselves um, both my parents and my uh, younger sister who's four years younger than me Ooh. were out of the house and we we both decided that, uh, like, in the future, we wanted to try out degradation, uh, consensual non-consent, um, and uh, things like that, that sort of, like, fantasy role play. And um, she also decided, like, 
on the weekend that it happened that she also wanted to uh, she also wanted to dress up as well so she was dressed like a schoolgirl and I was oh essentially God. like yes! the more uh I'm into like, this teacher sort of role yeah, for her. Yeah, you fucking were. And so when when it started off, um, I had I had her tied up uh, using both rope and uh, oh bondage goodness. tape, and I used a um, Hitachi wand or oh, yeah, um, Doxy wand, uh, whichever you prefer, uh, which I had bondage taped to her leg so it was directly on her clit i turned it on and just decided i was going to go make a cup of tea so i walked out of the room walked all the way down to the bottom of the stairs started making myself a cup of tea and then at this point there's a knock on the door um i open the door and it's a a dpd delivery driver and i take the parcel i'm like cheers mate and then in the background you can just hear my partner like in like absolute ecstasy with this toy and i'm just staring at this guy in the face like yeah, just just pretend this isn't happening and just slowly close the door. I went back upstairs and just sat and sat and watched as she's like writhing, writhing around like with this toy. Oh my God, um, afterwards, we uh, we then started having sex, um, and we had our safe words prepared. We had everything uh, sorted out. So during sex, I'm calling her a slut, a piece of shit, like <laughs> that she's worthless. <laughs> Um, like being being rough with her as well, but again, completely consensual before we went into this. Jesus um, fuck. Yeah, uh, saying that she's worthless, she's just my fuck toy, all oh. this, that, and the other. And she's then doing the consensual non consent and saying, no, stop, oh, please. But there is the safe word ready just in case. <laughs> and she, we're both shouting things out so loud that our neighbors could have easily heard us. <laughs> um, it was, we were being like almost too loud, but it was, it was absolutely fucking incredible. After which, um, like the last part of the actual uh the actual last part of sex was us um doing anal and i'm shouting out um what am i fucking what am i fucking and she's like and you're fucking my ass you're fucking my ass all this sort of thing and then i actually shouted out i'm gonna come i'm gonna come in your ass and then she's saying please don't come in my ass and this sort of thing and it happens and it finished and then we after we'd had sex we we was both just like laying there and just like absolute ecstasy my um this was this happened at about like half 10 11 in the morning as well and then so I, un- I untied her, I got her out of everything, and we just literally just lay- laying on the bed, like, just spooning, like, just completely out cold. And it was about two minutes later, so my partner's out cold right now. She's, like, fully asleep. She's gone. And I'm just I'm just in, like, that twilight period in between, like, sleep and everything. And I just hear my, my sister's door next to us open. No. And I'm just laying there going, oh, fuck, no. no, 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 no. And I just hear her walk downstairs. I hear her put the kettle on. <laughs> And then about two minutes later, I just hear her leave the front door to go to work. And we have never spoken about it since. But the only thing I do know is that my mum then came to me about four days later and said, Hi, Joe. So um, just uh, your sister said that uh, we ha- she heard you guys having sex the other day. Oh, fuck. Would you mind just keeping it down in future? And I'm sat there like sweating bricks. Like, what the fuck? What did she know? What what has she told you? But my face just had to like pretend that I didn't know what had happened. I was like, oh, I'm I'm really sorry. I didn't realize this had happened. And I'm there going, oh, fuck. She definitely heard. I know for a fact she heard everything. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's everything that happened. It was, uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> Fuck. Cheers again, guys, and I hope you have a great day. Oh my! Well, fucking bravo to this dude for surviving that moment with his mum and sister knowing, and the delivery his guy. Mum. His mama. What did his sister say to his mum? I wonder. I think she was probably cool about it. I think she. I don't think she went in hard. I think she was probably like, yeah. So I heard him having sex. I, I don't think. I feel like being a sister, you wouldn't just like go into detail. I can't no. imagine, you know, you'd not there's... to your mum because also yeah. that's awkward to talk to your so mum about. Awkward, right? Like, oh my god, I heard, I heard him like saying all this crap to his girlfriend and like He's a bad he like person. raped her yeah. ass and like <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah you because oh, also you get like the brother sister code, the sibling code where it's like mm. yeah you might be pissed off with them but you're always gonna be a bit more on your sibling side than your parents side you should be that's like the sibling code so hopefully she protected him just a little bit just like a little bit and hopefully she understands that it was role play and not actually something very problematic and thinks that her brother's like an absolute psychopath (laughs) 
yeah oh my god i'm just thinking like how the fuck you would feel if you heard your sibling doing all of that you just be like i really hope that she found some headphones and put on some really loud music and it's also it shouldn't be a gendered thing but it is i i I mean i i cringe and i struggle knowing my sister might have heard me but if it was my brother Mm. on the other hand oh my god it's like a completely different fucking game really yeah 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 i don't know what it is but then again i am I have a really close relationship with my sister. We talk about like sex in depth, and you know yeah. she pretty much knows everything. And you, that I and need you to. do live together, yeah. And we live together. But if it was my brother, on the other hand, especially, especially knowing if my sister's in, I'm going to indulge in like role play, but at a sort of subtle level, and be aware of how loud I'm being. If yeah. you if you're doing it when you think the house is free, it is like over the top out of control like when i have a free home yeah fully you go in and i'm just i can feel i can feel the shame and the pain oh yeah oh it's so, such a good story the the delivery guy yeah, part is jokes as well fuck me i'm i'm so glad that he sent us more details yes. because i feel like that is just such a fuck off story it's, it is a fuck off story it's fucking like Fuck off. Fuck off. I mean, as much as he says he thinks he's the fucking heavyweight champ of this competition, um, we do know mm-hmm. that that was completely... Shattered. I think you say shat on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it was completely shat on, shat on by Sophie. Sophie Anderson, at the moment, is holding the belt. Like, she, she has got that title. Um, she's got the gold. But, Joe. You have the silver. Oh yeah, Joe has the silver. But who's going to get the bronze, the, right? You've got the silver, mate. You've got the fucking silver. Yeah. It's a party going the on. Fucking silver. But we've still got bronze and we've still got this whole leaderboard to fill up and go. So if you have any more stories or yes. if you have, you, if you know friends who have told you crazy stories, get them to write them in, please. Because yes, we want to hear more of address. these. These are just so much fun. We're loving them. We want your okay, fuck off yeah, story. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to our email address fksgiven at comecurious.co.uk so degradation is quite an intense thing during sex but you're, oh, yeah. you're super into it really oh yeah massively like, what, yeah. what actually is it about degra- degradation that people do really enjoy i'm not entirely certain um i know that it's definitely a form of like extreme power play and humiliation and it's basically like yeah like teasing somebody laughing at somebody bullying somebody um during sex for like sexual gratification um and it definitely it falls into bdsm play and very yeah, rough role play type scenarios i mean it's it's stuff that i've always enjoyed it doesn't matter who's doing what to who like i enjoy it both ways um uh, I just I just think it's really fucking sexy and it really fucking gets me off and I don't know why either like is it like past trauma that has turned into some sort of sexual interests and shit who fucking knows but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it I'm gonna love it and as long as it's done in a safe sexual yeah. practice and you gotta do you man yeah I've never I don't know if I'm actually into the degrading part of things I like it but when people say filthy like weird things to me yeah during sex but like whenever it's come to like you're a slut Mm -hmm. or you're a filthy cum slut and like stuff like that I'm like "Mm, that's not turning me on yeah so I think that I don't get turned on by the degrading but like I do get turned on by people saying like kind of fucked up things to me yeah so there's like the difference between dirty talk and yeah saying Mm. fucked up shit to you but then I think specifically degradation is yeah just like putting somebody down for their sexual yeah. gratification um but of course it's only really okay to do that when you're both in an environment that it's it's seen as equal it is just role play you know that's not how the other person feels or how they want to be treated outside of the bedroom um and so it takes a lot of trust and and talking and communication and trial and error like like what you said i don't like being called a slut that's not something that gets me off but i like being called like a stupid fucking idiot you know like <laughs> like it's so weird what turns you on and what doesn't turn you on and there's yeah. kind of no explanation for it really yeah 
I like being like, I like people using me. I don't yeah. know if that's a form of it. I guess so, yeah. That is a form of degradation, but it depends on yeah. the language that they use when they're doing it. Like, oh yeah, you filthy little bitch. You just like to be used. You're only here to for my pleasure. It, and again, like I don't like the, the word, the, the, the B word as well. I don't like the bitch word either. No. But I like being called a cunt in bed. I love being called a cunt. Interesting. Yeah, right? It's so unusual what like is acceptable and what isn't. Yeah, I I I I like the kind of like really fucked up like daddy kind of role play yeah. when it comes to that kind of stuff in the bedroom. So it's just like I don't know, like a daddy's little girl and like it's re- like it's actually really mess- like messed up. I can't I it can't I though. still feel the shame like yeah. when I say it though because it is that like boundary pushing thing, but like the whole That's I think why it's me, such though, a turn like, on. It, it, it revolves around more being like, oh, good girl, like, take this. Yeah, kind of thing. Like, like, caring you're like, Dom. no, no, don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you can have, like, the caring guide you through this um, kind mm. of role play. It just, it so depends on what you're into. Because this one day I'll be really into it and another day I won't be. And I want the, yes. I want the caring daddy Dom. And then I'll, then I'll want, like, no, I, I want you to, like, laugh at me. Yeah. And tell me how much I think- you, you know I hate this or I love this and I'm pretending that I'm not to. That's a really important thing to say, though, mm-hmm. when talking about this stuff, is that it's not all the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. because you liked it one day doesn't mean that you need that the next. Because I think, especially when you're into, like, sex that does push the boundaries in this kind of way, like, it's really good to have the sort of sensual, like, caring side of things yeah. another day. Because after a while, like, it could, you know... If, you in like actually a negative way like if that was the only sex that you were having then you might actually just end up feeling a bit like shit about yourself yeah because even as much as we know that aftercare is so important it's not just about aftercare after the act after the moment it's about checking in a week later a couple of days later a month later even um because Mm -hmm. you do it doesn't matter who's doing it to who especially when it's like the worst is the worst stuff is the stuff that gets you off most so like for me it's incest i love like incest play again like i've never been really into the daddy stuff but like uncle brother stuff for sure and then again yeah. there's loads of fucking shame around that because it's like well I've, oh, i don't fancy my brother and uncle i don't want them to fuck me and it's like but that's that's not what you're saying that's where your brain is going because mm-hmm. it's so taboo it's so over the top um Again, like, I was bullied at school for being dyslexic. And so I get off on being called, like, a stupid fucking whore. Actually, no, I don't like the word whore either. I don't know. Like, like really, stri- like, obviously degrading w- words for women I'm not into for some reason. But yeah. call me, like, yeah, a stupid fucking girl. That's how I like being called a girl. Like, little girl. It's so fucked, right? I, 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 I like so being fascinating. called girl, yeah. too. But Good girl just because... like. Oh. yeah i know like moist wide but just because florence and i enjoy this doesn't mean that everyone enjoys it there's a lot of people no. that want to try it that don't like it um and you have to be careful with those people i mean i know that i like it like it and i've always enjoyed it so it's easy for me to say i'm into this this and this but a lot of people haven't been in a safe place to explore that yet um i feel like you need a big level of trust with the person that you're doing it with yeah. and you need to like fully know that like they don't actually feel that way yeah or like uh, uh, and yeah it also depends like who it is with because I've definitely been in situations where I've spoken to someone about like what I was into and stuff and like, when it actually came to having the sex I was so fucking creeped out by what he was saying I was like this is not a turn on <laughs> no oh so yeah, it, it, it requires checking in. And also as much as like we're talking about people who are submissive and in vulnerable like roles in the bedroom, it also is important to protect our doms and our more mm. like, uh, you know, mistresses and people in power because they also need the care too. Because what they're doing to somebody, they've literally, they're going against everything that they've been taught to do. And so that can be really hard on them yeah. and they could think that they're a terrible person even if you're sitting there going no but I love it all it's absolutely fine so it's it's really you have to make sure that both of you are so okay with it yeah I actually had so I, I the person that I saw before my ex we were really into like all that kind of like talk and stuff and like it was really hot and then when I was with my ex like we tried to go there mm-hmm. and it just felt so like 
stupid coming out of our <laughs> mouths like at that point we were just like we were, we just couldn't do it together which was really interesting mm. like I don't know whether we would have built up to it if we had been in the relationship longer but but I think like the way that our relationship was it was just like it just felt so unnatural and like yeah. hilarious didn't work saying it to each other because it was just like not our jam yeah not our thing it's different with different people like, that's what's fascinating about sex is you'll yeah fuck somebody or be with somebody sexually and then realize that you're into something completely different because they've they've helped you see a different side yeah yeah it's so so interesting but yeah so after having this dis- after having this discussion and hearing Joe's story, we were inspired to ask you curious fuckers, what are the worst things that people have ever said to you during sex? Oh my God. And not not actually degradation no, kind of shit, but like, like actually just, what from. was the worst thing anyone ever actually said to you during sex? Fuck. I mean, I've had, I've definitely had like, I love you from like a one night stand before and I and it and the first <laughs> oh. time he said it I was literally like I, I like laughed and I was like did I just hear that right and then the second time he said it it was like as he was coming as well it was like I love you and I was like what the fuck we don't know each other like what's happened uh, um oh I'm trying to think of like the weirdest thing I think the the weirdest thing was, it wasn't like the worst but like some guy that was just like yes 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 yeah. yes yes I remember yes. this dude <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we shouldn't, we can't funny? laugh. It's not fair, but also we're allowed to laugh because that's like, it's part <laughs> of sex. Like it's we funny. all do fucking weird shit during sex. <laughs> exactly. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, we got to laugh about it too. Yeah. I've definitely said stuff that has made my partner laugh before. Like where I've been like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like, like when I'm playing like a Dom role or... I come out with like a really fucking weird line where I'm just like, yeah, you make my tight little cunt hole jizz or something like that. It just like throws people out of the moment and they're like, what? Wait, what? Yeah, excuse me, what? Um, I'm Yeah, some weird shit like that has been said for sure. Okay, I'm dying to hear the curious fuckers. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Fuck me. Oh my God, Florence, I have just had an amazing wank to the kinky section in cheeks. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so jealous. I'm going to go and do that well, after we finish recording. Oh baby. I um, I absolutely, I love it so much when kink is included in the categories on on like ethical porn sites because I feel oh, like it's yeah. kind of left out these guys have like I feel like they're in my mind they've got like a guy on guy section a rough section a kinky section I'm like well I'm fucking done the curious fuck is like what the fuck are you talking about I need to be in I need to be I need to know what this juicy juicy website is and this is our new sponsor Cheeks well, hey. which Thanks, is Cheeks. a community for sexual inspiration education and all things intimacy so they've got porn Porn, sexy audio stories, tutorials, and more. Their website is actually so delicious as well. I love so the branding. We, I mean, we're such suckers for branding, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> we really are. Uh, just like, and porn, I want, to be I, fair. I want my porn page not to look like some like dirty back alley kind of site where I feel wrong. I want it. To, I want them to be proud for it. And Cheeks literally do have that. The styling is just nice. Yeah. They're really revolutionizing the porn and ethical porn scene. And you know how much we love ethical porn. And it's really fucking tasty when porn also includes sex education. Yeah, they do live tutorials. How cool is that? So fucking cool. It's part of a community that I want to be a part of anyway. Well, we are a part of it now, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. And you curious fuckers can be part of the community too. Use our promo code COMECURIOUS to get a 14-day free trial when it comes to choosing Cheeks' yearly subscription. That's two weeks of free wanking. Whoa. Love it. Go check out Cheeks at getcheeks.com. So that is spelled C-H-E-E-X, cheeks, baby. Just like how mine clap when I masturbate. (laughs) Happy wanking, everyone. Enjoy. Okay, first one. What we having for dinner? (laughs) That's like the classic long-term relationship sex talk. Yeah, that really is. I mean, it could be like a... Could it have been like a funny, like, I'm just about to eat your pussy moment, potentially? Oh, 
or was it just like I'm not enjoying this yeah. what are we having for dinner oh my god I've been there though you know when you're fucking you're just like all I'm thinking about is food I cannot wait for dins <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait for my dinner <laughs> ah, jokes I think I'd be pretty offended though if someone said that to me during sex I'm like come on yeah, dude where's be your, in the moment where's your mind at yeah yeah I'd probably be like hey do you want to stop like not super yeah should we just yeah. yeah not do this we're done <laughs> okay this one's this one's pretty funny well it's kind of bad but it says oh my god you have a yeast infection in brackets at the site of some normal discharge oh Oh, uh, that is pretty bad i feel that i feel that because it's just like yeast infections are like a normal but like to to out them like that you know that's such a bad way of oh my god as well she had normal discharge isn't it the lack of education around discharge sickens me the lack of in yeah basically it just the lack of education discharge is the creamy stuff that vagina owners get that vulva owners yeah. get to clean our vaginas out because normally yeah, and it's your dicks are putting shit up there that can't live up there <laughs> exactly <laughs> and it's it comes in like all different colors like throughout the month as well so it can be like really clear and like sticky and then there are like and when you're like nearer the end of your cycle it gets like creamier oh yeah massively and that's just creamy how it is thick i mean be that's yeah that is just obviously a yeast infection can mean more discharge than normal but then also some people get a small amount of discharge some people get a large amount of discharge mm-hmm. like everyone's body is different yeah and it changes of course a yeast infection is like redness and itchiness or a definite smell or a discoloration in your discharge yeah like a greeny tinge yeah yeah you you know when you got something going on down there most of the time yeah you do <laughs> oh my god when it goes like that clotted cream oh, you're like, oh and you're like please get out of me horrifying this oh god i had the worst yeast infection once and it was so disgusting <laughs> i took a picture of the discharge Did and you? Sent it to a friend <laughs> see that that's cool like that's what we need to do be like look at look at what i'm going through right now like please Literally. feel me she was probably sick <laughs> or maybe she just felt normal because she was like that's yeah. nice my my discharge issues I've have felt normalized too. yeah i've had that too yeah yeah we've all fucking had that if you haven't then i don't know what's your vagina is a miracle <laughs> a miracle um this one's fucked though it would feel so much better to take the condom off like come on oh, come on come dude on, man <laughs> dude <laughs> i mean uh, obviously but obviously. why would you say that <laughs> obviously it's like why are you trying to justify taking the condom off that's a big no-go there's just so there's so much like condom stigma still yeah. like and i just don't just so many guys out there are so anti condom well, penis but owners, it's like we what we say. say i swear yeah penis owners and um but it's like what we say in basically every episode at the moment it's just like condoms you need to find the right one that fits you yeah. and then once you do find that one it's really not that different no like they are like t-shirts you know look after your dick like it's your body you don't go for any fucking size t-shirt you go for the one that fits yeah. so yeah it is annoying at, like trying different ones and seeing what works for you but once you find that right fit honestly it yeah. sex is just so much easier you don't fear it so much and of course yeah like you do have a bit of plastic around your cock it will feel different without but there are really good bonuses to condoms that we don't talk about enough like for example like the cleanup you know yeah the cleanup is a big fucking deal it might be easy for you because you just jizz in somebody and then leave but for us women like it can fuck us up like i am dealing with bv at the moment because i'm having mm-hmm. cum inside of me and it's horrible and i don't want it i don't want it anymore <laughs> you're like stick a condom on me stick a condom on. well yeah no sam's actually a pretty great legend he was like oh how about if we because i'm on contraception at the moment so we're exploring sex without condoms for the first time and so like the compromise and he even came up with this on his own was like what about if i start without a condom but then halfway through i put a condom on to Mm. jizz in and obviously lasting longer which means like fucking great for me and it's just i was like you need a fucking medal sam like i swear to god like that is that is goals (laughs) 
We need, yeah, we need yeah, more men it really like Sam. Is. Yeah. And of course, the main benefits of using condoms is STI protection and pregnancy protection. Like, as, as that goes without saying. Be safe, everyone. Of course, like the age old saying, is it in? <laughs> I. I've I've said this before, but not in like the sense of like, uh, is it in you have a small cock? More like, is it in as in I can't tell if you've put this inside me because it feels like it feels like numb and tight and wet down there and you've put it somewhere, but it's not actually I can't tell if it's in my vagina or not. Yeah, I probably said it when it wasn't actually in. (laughs) sometimes though and they're like they're like because your legs are like tight or yep, something yep, yeah yeah they're like oh it's in obviously yeah, it feels nice but you're literally just rubbing up and down in between my legs yeah it, or in like between my thighs. you're basically fucking my thigh thigh gap or my yeah. crack you know or your bum crack yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it almost the thing is sometimes you're a bit like okay i know it's not inside me but i can't be a hundred percent sure because sometimes yeah. like your vagina like my vagina just gets like sometimes really numb and i, I just can't tell what's going on down there <laughs> bare, bare annoying but yeah is it in is a real fucking deep one especially if you're yeah. if it's like a one night stand and you're like is it in yet you know like that's fucking deep like don't i think because like it's like it's the it's the hang up about dick size in that in that um saying yeah really, isn't it because yeah. it's just like oh shit you can't feel me i'm so small yeah. whatever and it gets in their head unless um, <gasps> wait unless he said that to her and then it's the hang up about vagina tightness <gasps> oh, oh flip the fucking oh. story mate whoa yeah flip it <laughs> <laughs> fuck man yeah, so is it like, about that. like imagine him like over you like uh is it in is it in <laughs> have i got it in like i can't tell because your vagina is so flabby <laughs> <laughs> your badge is so big it's so wide how many kids have you had again <laughs> <laughs> you a tight little bitch what is this you've just lied (laughs) yeah when you're doing all the sexing you're like oh my god my pussy's so tight yeah (laughs) and then you get there and it's like so wide (laughs) although that is a compliment right like if you feel vagina that is feels wide feels like naturally not tight that's a compliment because it means that you've turned them on so much Mm. so that their vagina has got swole and really wet if it's yeah. really tight and feels really like yeah too tight then it's probably dry yeah. because they don't feel comfortable the whole size thing is so um person to person as well yeah. because this is it this is why we say that it's not about the size of your genitals it's about the match that you have mm-hmm. It's not ever about what the actual size is, but it's about like, does that dick fit in that vagina? Yeah, the key, key Or does that vagina fit thing. that dick? Yeah, or that vagina fit that vagina, that peen fit that peen. Um, but it's it's not just about the physicality, it's also about the mental fit as well. Yeah. It's gotta mentally yeah. fit, otherwise it don't work. It don't work. The chemistry has to be there, you know. Mm. Gosh, there's so much to it. <laughs> Ah, like who'd have think we'd make a podcast out of all of this? <laughs> <laughs> a weekly podcast about oh. sex. Is there that much to talk about? No, really, uh, I actually think now. like my dad said that to me once. He was just like, how are you still talking about this? Oh my days. Because people like you, we need to educate people like you. People like you uh, have pretty basic sex and don't enjoy it. Oh, <laughs> just calling your dad out on the podcast. Uh, fuck it he'll never hear this he, he might who knows? who knows his girlfriend might listen oh, to this shit but then his girlfriend well, might be like oh my god florence is right <laughs> <laughs> so deep uh, the deepness okay you know what if you were supportive i wouldn't be bitching yeah about so you. bitter yeah exactly <laughs> parents please be supportive of your children no matter what they do otherwise they could call you out publicly on a <laughs> On a platform that millions and millions and millions of people, people tune into. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too good. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, mm. so. Oh, this one. <laughs> You're the first girl that I slept with that has small boobs. Oh, not okay. I don't, what the fuck? What even is that? I don't know. Like, that's such a weird... Maybe, like, this person was genuinely fascinated and it came out really... Fu- it must have come out wrong because no one thinks that's a good thing to say. 
no in, in the brackets um they said that I, and they were insecure about them so it's just like oh, God, oh no dude you have to be so careful when you're commenting on people's bodies like it, even if yeah. you just just don't comment unless it's positive that's the safer bet to be always stay positive compliment rather than comment yeah imagine it <laughs> you're the first girl that i slept with that's had a flat ass oh jesus it's like um in fleabag where she's got that montage where she's fucking loads of people and then there's that dude that's like you got such small tits your tits are so small and she's just there like what what the fuck yeah, but he's loving it yeah. he's loving it it's not like a negative it's like oh my god your, your tits are so small <laughs> people love small tits yeah like, they fucking just do just a whole fucking itty bitty titty community yeah like. yeah for sure it's like a whole fetish in itself so raise your nipples up with the small tatters because like fucking I'm here love with it you. yeah yeah baby i support i love my small tits i'm waving the titty flag for you guys yay <laughs> You used to have small tits and then they grew suddenly. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, it was very weird. <laughs> like, I went from, like, normal tit size to, like, bazonkers. And to the point where people on the bazonkers. Babe channels was asking if I had a boob job. Wow. Fully, yeah. I had a Mad. couple of people being like, have you have you done something? Have you? And I was like, I don't know what's happened. I think my tits just you came had, like, in. a weird hormone rush. Yeah, I think so. Because then also, like, acne and, like, bare hormones. I got so many stretch marks. And it was, I was a much later bloomer. bloomer. We're talking, like, in my sort of mid to late 20s did I get my tits. Mad. Which is insane. Insane. Insane? Insane in the membrane. Oh, titty membrane. I like the next one is can we have a threesome with one of your mates oh my god during, <laughs> during sex. sex especially one of your mates as well that's like actually quite deep you you don't go that there you don't go to the friend friends deep. area man Way. you don't have threesomes with your friends like that's just not something that people do i mean you can if you have that relationship with your friend but if you don't have that relationship if it's not stated that's off fucking limits Not great at all. Although, Sam and I have been talking about that. I just can't remember if it was during sex that it was brought up. I doubt it was during sex. Let's have a threesome. Disclaimer, he does not sound like that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Uh, are you sure? Are you sure? Mm. So I think like the worst thing that ever, anyone's ever said to me, it wasn't after like penetration, but it was after I gave them a blowjob. And basically this is going to sound really bad, but their dick was quite small. And I had never like gave, given a blowjob to a dick that small before. And I didn't really know what to do with it. Um, and I obviously didn't do a very good job because I was just like, what the fuck am I doing? Um, and he afterwards said to me, you're gonna have to get better at that. No comment to that. I mean, but you know, me. <laughs> fuck me, Jesus and Christ. The, the worst thing was is that then he went down on me, and it was so bad as well. Oh, and I was just like, how can you get off on saying that I was bad, and then you are the worst oral I've ever received in my whole life as well? Oh shit. I guess you both just super went into each other, and like we're being bitter yeah. about it. The fact that you said that was just like too much. I can't. Yeah. Um. To be fair, <laughs> I have said um. Well, I think I was I was going to fuck this dude that I've known for a long time. Um, and then because he was, he couldn't get hard. And I remember having a conversation with him and it wasn't like a, oh, is it me kind of conversation, which I think yeah. just makes the whole situation so much worse. Don't do that. Just be like, oh, why do you think that is? And I remember being like, I know why it is. It's because you smoke loads of weed is why you can't get hard, which is such a cunty thing to say on my part. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? I know what it is. And of course, <laughs> just fuck off. You know, that was when I was really young, like a teenager. And actually we're still mates now. We still chat now and again now so Aww. yeah and i have i have apologized to him for that and as well and uh, he was like no man it was cool and i was like no it wasn't cool man it was not okay <laughs> oh, so deep um so deep yeah so i mean we live we learn we, we say stupid stuff and then we regret them for years and then we never say them again hopefully i think that is all we have time to talk about that's all we have time <laughs> for today curious fuckers it is all we have time for now i can't stop thinking about degradation degradation mm. oh god i've just i just finished my period so i'm like 
in my horny week oh, and I'm like fuck. alone oh, in Lord Toronto. Florence, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to have been like writing an apology letter to your vagina right now because oh, I feel that pain. The, the week after the period and just before you're like just around your ovulation. Oh, Jesus Christ. RIP or something. I want sex so bad. Well, I've got a date tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Manifest. <laughs> Buy some condoms, please. <laughs> I brought so many condoms with me. I'm so proud. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I brought yeah. all my faves. Nice. Nice one. Um, so curious, fuckers. Thank you so much for contributing to this degradation episode and fuck off story roundup. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Didn't really know where else to go from there. <laughs> So if you love this episode, please share it with everyone because we obviously need to educate so many more people on what is okay to say in the bedroom. Yes, uh, yeah. And okay, like, wait. And not okay is okay when it's okay for you both. I feel like I need that on a fucking t-shirt, mate. Like, whoa, that's a slogan right there. Yeah. And if you have your own fuck off story, please email it in at fksgiven at comecurious.co.uk. And of course, we will be asking for more story things to contribute to the podcast on Instagram. So if you're not following us, please do at comecurious, which is spelled C-O-M-E, curious. And you can follow our personal accounts, Reed Amber X and Florence Bark. And please leave a rating and a review because that will get us into more people's ears and that's what we all want. It's up to you. Get us on the Apple charts, like high up, because I think we're on it, but we're low. So we need to be higher. Yeah, baby. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you can watch this on YouTube and you can also listen to this on your podcast platforms. Yay. Wee. For that morning commute. To work. And I apologize for the fucking construction noise. Um, it's only going to be here for today and next episode and then I'm going to be in LA. Yeah, baby, soaking up that sun. It's going to be so good. Um, yeah, we love you all so much. And yeah, see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. Oh, sorry, I got that before you. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.